All right, here we go. We have Northern Cali's finest in the building, Lazy Boy. Welcome to Vlad TV. What's up, Vlad? Thanks for having me, bro. We've actually been talking about doing this for, for some years. Yeah. Yeah, we reached out, what, maybe five years ago or something? About that. Yeah, but you had some stuff going Four on. Four years ago, yeah. You know something like that, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot going on, just I wasn't really invested like I should have been, you know what I mean? But I think now's a better time anyway, yeah. Yeah, I heard you had some drama going on in your life. Yeah, that kind yeah. of prevented yeah, was, that, but you know? Yeah. Everything comes together when it should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's your first time here. I want to start yep. from the very beginning. So I grew up in the Bay as well. Yeah. I was in San Mateo. You were in San Jose, yep. which is about maybe about 45 minutes. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. If that. If that. Yeah. Exactly. So what was that like? Uh, To me, regular, just, yeah, I mean, just growing up, being a little bad kid, whatever, you know what I mean? Normal shit. Uh, it's like really, uh, like it's like a big Mexican culture out there, especially out of the whole bay. San Jose like the one that's like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As far as the culture and shit, it's the heaviest out there. Yes. Uh, uh, in the east side, that's, that's really like all I know. Like I never even went to other sides growing up, like because it's so big until I, you know what I mean? Just became an adult and shit. But yeah, it was just, uh, Really just being a little bad kid. Uh, I was actually a good kid till I was probably like 12. And then I kind of start dibbling, dabbling a little bullshit. You know what I'm saying? The gang shit around me, you know, it's it's just outside right when you walk out. So so you're fully Mexican? Yeah. Both parents? Yep. You grew up with both parents in the house, one parent? Uh, uh, They divorced when I was like 11. So okay. uh, after that, I went with my dad and my grandma, my dad and my grandparents. Oh, so you actually went on your dad's yeah, side. Yeah, on my dad's mom, side. Which is actually kind of rare. Usually yeah. most kids go with their mom. Yep. Well, what was going on to make you go with your dad instead of your mom? Uh, I remember uh, when it first happened, I was with my mom for a few months, and then I was just acting out to where it was hard for her to, you know, control me as far that's that's what I remember. And then my dad, he was always able to, like, put his foot down on me, you know, Uh so so I went I went with him. Yeah. Me and my brother went with him. Okay, so it was two kids. Yeah, well my my dad has a uh, well there's five of us. Mm. But uh my sisters were my mom and then uh me and my brother came with my dad. Yeah. Okay. Now your dad was he mixed up in the streets at all or he yeah. was just a regular working guy? No, he's mixed up in the streets, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so did you get to see that growing up or did you try to oh, kind of yeah. shield you? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, one of my first memories uh, he doesn't even, he can't believe I remember this, but I was in a car seat. It's like my first memory. And uh, we're, we're in some apartments and uh, I remember him being in the car and I remember him saying, oh, there's one of them right there. It's like blurry. I remember that. I remember uh, I remember him bouncing out and just, you know what I'm saying? He, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but, you know, he, he walked up on, on old boy. That was like my first memory ever in my life. I remember that's like the earliest memory I have. And then... Growing up, you know what I'm saying? Um, if if it was ever like like little drama that needed to get handled, you know, he would make sure I handled that. You know what I mean? Like like a man, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh never doing nothing too crazy, you know what I'm saying? Chunking them and shit like that. You know, he'll be like, Hey, you need to handle that, you know? Don't back down from that, this and that. So that was regular growing up and then I, I would always see him do shit. I remember uh I remember when I was like real little I used to, it used to like scare me because I was so little. Uh, but then I, as I started like, yeah, you know I mean, uh, 11, 12, 10, like those ages, I start like, it start not worrying me no more. I like damn near want to get involved. Like, cause I, I start becoming like more accustomed to it, you know? Was your dad ever getting arrested or was he? Uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he has. Uh, uh, I don't really know uh, too much. Cause like I said, that was when I was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like younger, but uh, but as far as like shit popping off and stuff, that that would happen. Like I, I remember a bunch of times that happening with him. Yeah. I mean, did he try to shield you from the gang thing and not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's you know, he's always been a real good dad. Yeah, like yeah. like I'm actually known like like in the hood for that. Like I'm like one of the guys who like got like a good dad in his life. A lot of my other friends, their dads are either doing life or you know on drugs or something like that. So yeah, he always tried to shield me from it. But once he knew that like he couldn't stop it, he told me, well, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. Mm -hmm. You know? Don't be half-assed with it. You know, don't do something and then 
regret it, you know, and not be ready for what it comes with. So if he didn't want me to do it, but once he knew I was, he made sure I was, you know, ganged up and shit like that. Yeah. Okay, so your parents get divorced right around 12 years old. You started to kind of get mixed up. Yeah, I think it was 11, yeah. 11, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Started getting into fights, started yep. getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. Were you getting arrested back then? Uh, My first time was, I think I got caught with some brass knuckles and some weed. Okay. I was like like 15 or something like that, okay. yeah. And I didn't know brass knuckles is a, at the time I didn't know it counts as a de- possession of deadly weapon. You know, so that, but that wasn't nothing serious though. It wasn't until uh, I got caught with uh, a couple guns. That was when I actually had to like uh, go sit down and fight that, get a lawyer. Yeah, my uh, my pops helped me with that one. Like he helped me get the lawyer and all that. And then I recently, allegedly, uh, got got charged for another two guns at one of my last few video shoots. But uh, I hired the same lawyer that I hired for the first one. Uh, the uh the first one I they gave me a year, uh, uh and then the second one recently I beat it uh for illegal search yeah. Okay, so you're growing up in this primarily Mexican neighborhood in San Jose, and there's a lot of gang activity around. Yeah. How yeah. old were you when you first joined? Um, man, I yeah I really don't uh I don't you know what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, yeah, you're just a regular dude. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not. Uh, yeah, but it's it's a lot though. of bullshit around, though. Yeah. Okay. So you get caught with brass knuckles when you were like 15. Yeah. And then you get caught with a gun at how old? Uh. Maybe like 19. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. But I fought that case for a year, so I think when I went in. I was 19, I think, or I was 19, I went in, I was 20, yeah. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. I remember the day I got released, uh, July 22nd, that day always stuck in my head, yeah. Why'd you feel at that point in your life you need to carry a gun? Uh Oh, that was like an easy decision. Like, it, it's either it's either catch the charge or, or get killed, you know what I mean? It's the same way I think now. You know what I mean? I, I, I try to be a lot smarter now because I know I'm, I'm a lot more well-known uh, in Northern Cali. So I try to uh, I try to uh, find loopholes. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe one of my guys gets his concealed carry. You know what I'm saying? One of my guys out there got it right now. So yeah. shit like that, I try to be smart about it. But at the time, uh, to answer your question, it's the only option. You know what I mean? Have you been shot at before? Uh, that's normal. Yeah. How old were you when you first got shot at? Sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, like like walking home from after school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the first time I remember that day. Yeah. Okay. Did you actually feel the bullets whiz by, or you know, cause... Uh, that not not on that day. Because I was like hella far away, but I have though for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What does that do to you? Because I mean, I've I've heard these stories before where like you'll feel it and then you'll hear it afterwards because the bullets yeah, fat, for sure traveling yep. faster than the sound. In the sound. Yeah. So like you, you'll feel the bu- bullet whiz by, then you'll hear the bang, mm-hmm. and it, it's a really surrealistic yeah, kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just adrenaline. It's just adrenaline. But ha- like after that, it just. I mean, it just wakes you up a little more. I wouldn't say, like, it's no dra- drastic change, but, you know, uh, it, it wakes you up, like, and then you might see one of your homies get killed or something. You might be like, damn, you see his family crying and stuff. You'd be like, damn, that could be my family, you know? I, I still think like that to right now, you know? Uh, like, how old were you when you lost a friend to to violence? Um, 17. 17? Uh, like, 16, maybe, 17. Okay, yeah. this was a close friend? Oh, yeah, yeah. And what happened around and, that situation? Uh, So it was, a, it was a lot that happened that little year or two. And then not only that, I lost, uh, um, I lost uh, a lot of my, like, best friends, my little small circle, <laughs> uh, like my circle within the circle, you know? Uh, I lost all them. They all got locked up. They all got life. So that also, like, like, messed me up and I was like angry after that you know what I mean 
Um, and then I seen people snitch and that that made me angry. And then it made me never trust nobody after that because the people that snitched, I never thought they would tell, you know? So it let me know, like, ain't no telling what could happen. You know what I mean? You know, the one thing that's I find unique when I interview Mexicans that come from, you know, a life similar to yours is that some of them have said that as a kid, they would aspire to do life in prison and be like a big shot collar, you know, in Pelican Bay somewhere, yeah, which, that... which I've never really heard any other type of people say before. I always feel like it's unique to the Mexican community. Do you know okay. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought everybody said that because growing up, that that's what like most of my friends talk so, like. So you've heard this before. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't say I ever felt like that. I did always like want to get a taste of this and that though, but I never wanted to like, you know what I'm saying, throw my life away like that. I always wanted to like be some, you know what I mean? But you know, you're half in, half in the bullshit, half in trying to be some, it's kind of hard sometimes, yeah. you know? Yeah. So the rapping thing, how old were you when you first started rapping? Man, I remember being like eight years old, I would try to like make my own little songs, you know? And I rapped to my family and stuff. Uh, I'll be acting like I was performing or something in the living room. They'll act like they're the audience, you know what I mean? So uh, that shit's really in me. I always love music. Uh, every, I remember waking up like on the weekends and my, my dad would be slapping like Mac Dre, Too Short, E-40, oldies too. And so I've always loved music. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've always loved music. Yeah. Okay, but being a fan of the music and kind of rapping. Okay, so my first song that like I ever dropped like yeah. release I had made a couple songs and like just had them but they weren't out my first song I ever dropped was it was right before In My Hood maybe like six to eight months before that I dropped maybe three songs the Thizzler was like the ones who really got me to drop my first music they dropped a couple audios for me mm -hmm. yeah yeah luckily they really looked out for me a lot yeah yeah, shout out to Thizzler. Yeah, I actually shout reached out Thizzler. to him because uh, they lined this interview up too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I felt that like what they did with the West Coast rap cipher was very dope. That was dope. So I, I reached out personally to them, and say, "Hey, man." Well, I think I publicly said it. I said, "Yo, congrats to Thizzler for pulling this off." And then we started DMing. Yeah. And they're like, "Hey, do you want to interview some of the people?" And yeah. I said, "You, yeah." You yeah, know? yeah. They texted me. Yeah, they were like, "Vlad." Vlad said, what's up? Uh, you yeah. interested? Right away, I was like, yeah, because I, I, uh, a lot of my boys asked me too, like, man, hey, uh, you got to do the Vlad next, you know? And I was like, I was like, man, well, he tried to do one with me and I didn't do it. So I felt kind of like, I don't want to hit him now. And he might be like, man, I asked you before. You didn't. Nah, I was like, man, I'll, I'll yeah, wait I'm, to see if he hits me, you know? Yeah, I'm not like that. Man. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. I, yeah. I understand sometimes timing doesn't always match yeah. up. So I don't, I don't take things personally when, when yeah. things don't work out. Uh, okay, so... Before you started rapping, were you already Lazy Boy? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that was a street yeah, name. Yeah, that's been since I was a kid, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not a rap name, that's my name. That's, yeah. your, that's your street name, right. And uh, like, where did it actually come from? Man, that's a good question. Like, It just came from like all the guys around. I don't know, man. I just remember one day they were like, oh, man, you lazy. And then I remember <laughs> the other homie goes, Lazy Boy. Put the boy at the end, and I hated it. I hated mm. that name, yeah, and and then you know it grows on you, and it just gets stuck to you eventually. You know what I mean? But right. yeah, I really don't know like the story behind it that much, but yeah, just I that. guess that's how they see me. Yeah, right. I mean, you also got the lazy boy recliners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's that yeah. kind of name association. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, when I first started dropping music, I typed my name in. It'll be all the furniture on yeah, the exactly. top. Yeah, exactly. And then now they're way at the bottom. Okay. Of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now uh, the face tats. Did that come before the rapping? Way before. Yeah. Okay, so how old were you got your first face Man, tattoo? I remember I had the back of my head tatted when I was, like, 15. But, like, uh, at my school, everybody, like, not everybody, but a lot of people are sleeved up. Like, tattoos are regular. You get them at lunch. Like, by the handball course, they be, I mean, it's little kids doing tats. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's tatted where I'm from. Like, in, in school, it's, it's super normal. Like, it's not really crazy. Really? Same with the face tats. I might have a couple e extra, but like uh, if every day you might go to the store or something, you're usually going to see at least one guy in a car or at the store with a face tag, like, you know what I'm saying? And, it, you know, it's part of the Mexican culture, that the head and the face, that's like real common, you know? Okay, so you got your head tatted at 15. Yeah. But that's the back of your head, right? The back of my head, yeah. So yeah. you could still grow your hair out and that's not yeah. a big deal. 
Yeah. Once you start doing the front of your yeah. face, though? Yeah, I didn't get none of those till I was an adult, yeah. Okay. Like 18, yeah. Uh, my neck, I think I got, like, on my 18th birthday, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, when you do that, you, you basically accept that you're probably not going to get a regular job. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, you're all in. Yeah. You know, occasionally you do see dudes with face tasks working like at Jack in the Box or something. Yeah. But you, you could clearly tell this wasn't the path that they exactly. set out on when yeah. they ended up here. I'm not going to lie and act like that was my thoughts when I did it because I just did it just because of where I'm from. Like, I just, like, I'm like that, you know? And then later on, then I was like, okay, like, I'm either going to figure something out and become something or... Maybe, yeah, you know I mean, maybe I shouldn't have got shit on my face. Well, I had to see, you know. Mm. So the let's break down the face tats. So when you start at the top, you got the L. And the L is what? Well, you said this before in interviews. Did I? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't think I said it in the interview. The ex- I don't think I said the exact thing in the interview. What? Oh, you know what it was? He asked me, what did it say? Yeah. So I read it to him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So what, what, what yeah, it, it says say? Latino gang. I mean, right. that's... That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Public knowledge, <laughs> I'm, not, yeah. I'm not looking for a, you know... Oh, okay, I get what you mean. Whatever yeah. hidden meaning Yeah, that's what it says. So literally if you, if you look at it, it's literally what it says. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so you got Latino gang yeah. on the left side. Mm-hmm. And then you have something written on the other side. It's the top of your head. Yeah, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. It's, it was, uh, man, I, I let some guy tear me up that I was locked up with. I regretted it. He... he I don't want to say he sucked because that's, that's the homie, but yeah, he wasn't the best. You know what I mean? And really, uh, it was red ink. People think, I, are you getting it lasered off? But it was red ink. That's why it looks like it's halfway lasered off, but really the ink was red. It was just bad quality. Yeah, I regret doing that. Okay, because you got something at the top of your head and then you got something oh, over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's just some numbers, and then that's like a crack, like a crack on my head. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then when you work your way down on your right side, you got the Rolex symbol. Yep. Are you a fan of Rolex or does it mean something else? Uh, just like, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like where I'm from, like, I'm one of the kings. You know what I mean? So it's like royalty. There's a lot of kings, but I'm one of them. Yeah. Okay. And then next to it is what? Um, That's Bullet Bill. Okay. Yeah. Then you got Teardrop. Yeah. Okay. We won't talk about that. Yeah. Whatever that is. And then you got coming down your right cheek is. Oh, uh, fuck a hater. Yeah. Fuck a hater. That was one of my first ones, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, if you could turn your head a little bit. This way? Oh, the shark fin. Yeah. yeah. It's the hockey team where I'm from, yeah. Okay, so San Jose Sharks. Yeah, They're yeah. from San Jose. Yeah. Okay, now the other side. Uh, At the very top. Oh, yeah, I can't speak on that one. Okay. Yeah. But then below that is bitches ain't shit. Yeah, yeah. Did you have daughters when you got this? That's a good question, but it had to have been like either right after, right before, but that was like not even on my mind. Like, I don't even look at those. Like, you know what I'm saying? The same thing when I'm thinking bitches, I'm thinking, you know, the hoes and shit like that. I I, I get it. But, you know, your kids are now old enough to read. Yeah, yeah. So now they could actually read what's on daddy's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it's kind of see like I, I remember one time not that I said one time it was like literally a couple of weeks ago I was like damn I kind of want to laser a couple off you know not the important ones but you know and then the homie was like man that's part of your image now though like everybody knows lazy boy from that and you know with, with this rap shit your image is real important like if the music's only half of it you gotta have the image with it I'm not saying you need face tattoos but that's just my image so I kind of don't want to change it so that's kind of why like you know what I mean, during my career, I'm just going to, whatever you see, that's what you get. You know what I mean? I mean, by the time you got your face all tatted up, mm. you know, with me, I, I'm in hip hop, so this is normal to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude comes in with, you know, yeah. I've interviewed dudes with their whole face tatted yeah. up. So yeah. to me, it's like regular. But when you go out into like society, like middle class white people yeah. and Asian people and so forth, do you ever feel like you scare people yep. or that type of yeah, thing? Yeah, I don't really like that feeling. Um, I feel that all the time, especially when you go to nicer areas, you know? Uh, like, especially if they don't know you and you don't talk to them, like you just walk by, they're always going to kind of, like, you could tell they're talking about you, looking at you, you know? Yeah. But it's all about the way you uh, the way you conduct yourself, too. Like, I'm never, like, a 
like no rude ass person for no reason. I always show people respect, no matter what what type of walk of life they are. I always, you know what I mean? I got manners and shit. You know, if you, you know what I mean, if you ain't did nothing wrong to me, I'm gonna show you respect. So if you talk to me, then you'll feel a lot more comfortable. But maybe if I'm just walking by or you see me at the light, then you might be you might be with your family. It might make you a little uneasy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've always found that the most thorough dudes that I've dealt with are always the most polite. Yeah. You know what I'm It'd saying? The, like the, the rah-rah guys are Cause, usually cause the wannabes. Because respect's a big thing with us. Yeah, you know? man. I've, yeah. I've had conversations with like the real OGs, and we've had, you know, if there's a disagreement, they would call me up and politely explain what the situation yep. is. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, let's and, fix and it. The, and, and we'll get at you one-on-one because yeah. we're not trying to embarrass you in front of people. Exactly. Yeah, I'll wait till it's just me and you talking yeah. Yeah, straight I've up. I've had lots yeah. of conversations like this uh, over the years, and... That's how you should tell the difference with people. Yeah. People that are extra loud and this and that. They usually got I'm, the I'm least. I'm usually not even worried yeah, about it. Manners, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the dudes. Yeah. Oh, speaking always... of the face tats, uh, the worst part about it is dealing with the cops. It's Hot. the worst. Because as soon as they see you, like, they're on you. Yeah. Alert. Like, that's the part I don't like. Because it sucks having to live like that. Like, every time, like, I see the cops, I'm like, damn, like, it's going to be a bad day. Like, if they see me, you know? Like, I try to stay behind the tinted windows, you know, but that's the worst part about it. It's just getting fucked with and getting harassed. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, you've talked about situations with the cops mm-hmm. where, uh, you know, they'll arrest you, you'll have money on you. And when you get out, oh, yeah. money's that's gone. Fine. That was that one time. Yeah, I had yeah. like 600 or something. They right. took it. I, I've had a couple, I, I, call, I could count them all on one hand, how many encounters I had where they were fair with me and didn't harass me, you know? But there was a couple where... I was surprised that they were just like, are you good? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you have asshole cops. I mean, Mm -hmm. I've been slammed against car doors, you know, car, like, hoods and stuff like that and and disrespected. I've also had dudes that are extremely polite. Yeah. And, you know, say, listen, we have to arrest you. You know, we're not dirtbags. You Mm -hmm. know, if you could kindly step outside the car, we'll have to put handcuffs on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. You know, and other times they'll just grab you and talk shit Mm -hmm. and whatever. Yeah. Um. Have you ever really been kind of abused by the police? Abused, like physically? Yeah. I've been thrown around a, few, a bunch of times. Yeah, okay, yeah, for whatever, sure. Like, I've been slammed on the floor, slammed on the door, head banging on the wall that type in of the thing. county. Yeah, yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. I mean, what was the longest bid that you did? Uh, Right under a year. Yeah. Okay. And that was in San Jose? Yep. Santa Clara County in the... Uh, in the in the snake pits in the seventh floor. Exactly. That's like the units. Yeah. Why is it called snake pits? Uh, supposedly there's a rumor that if you walk all the way down the tier past the sales, there's a painting of a snake on it. Supposedly. Okay. I've never seen it, though, but I always heard that rumor in there. Yeah. Okay. And what were you locked up for for that whole year? Uh, two guns. Okay. An empty gun and a loaded gun. All right. So now you're, were you always in the, so was it in state prison or were you just in jail? County. County jail. So county. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you never actually went to state prison nope. before. All right. So... You get put into county, mm. and regardless of officially what you are, you just being from a certain area is already putting you at odds with certain types of people, right? So what was the hardest part about being in, in jail in that type of environment? It, it wasn't really it wasn't really hard. It was just like, you know, uh, probably just missing your family and kids and so that's the hardest you know so you never had situations in jail oh yeah little situations happen for sure but i mean i wouldn't really call it like hard i I was just i i'm the type i adjust quickly like i could adapt to my environment wherever i'm at i'm always gonna adapt you know and Mm -hmm. you know it's, it's all in the head it's mental you know what i'm saying so i feel like i'm pretty good when it comes to that i don't i don't let shit really get to me you know well uh, In My Hood was the first song that really blew up. Yeah. It's had like six million views right now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And by the way, like, I went through the whole catalog. Mm-hmm. Out the Mud, I've listened to like 30 times. Today. For real? Yeah, it's I just a that. constant repeat. That's constant dope repeat. to hear. Thank yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think that's your most popular song. It's like in the middle. It's, it's like yeah, number three. Yeah, yeah. But that song right there... Uh, yeah, you 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 got yeah, something. Yeah, I appreciate that, that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's that one just, of my favorites too. Yeah, just the way the beat comes in and the way you're kind of sing-songing 
yep. on it yep. and, and the chorus. And, yep. You know, with a 38 snub nose. Mm hmm. You know, that's not my type. That's dope, yeah. You know, Glock with the I didn't know you really were listening that's like that. Yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's dope. what I like. Like, the way, the way you're singing on it, yeah. it's just like... The melody. Like I'm telling you, I'll just repeat, repeat, For repeat, real? repeat, 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 repeat. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the whole day. The whole day. Oh, uh, damn. I'm, I'm surprised the song ain't bigger, honestly. Yeah. Uh, okay, so after the song comes out, uh, out uh, in my hood, then... Do other songs start to blow up after that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that like made things hella change. But uh, I feel like, all right. So I w I was doing cool. Like the numbers were decent, whatever. And then I go to No Jumper, right? Uh, I I posted a picture of me and Adam, and then for some reason, like everything I dropped after that. It's, I just, cause at first I think it was like Northern Cali watching me. Mm -hmm. After that, it was like the whole state and the rest of the West Coast. I, honestly, that was like a big jump right there, to be honest, you know. Um, but yeah, when Out the Mud came out, uh, so I stopped dropping on Thizzler at a certain point because I wanted to build my own uh, platform. I, that was like always really important to me. Yeah. But Out the Mud was one of those songs where I was like, oh, my channel's starting to do a little better now. So you are right about that, yeah. 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 Okay, and then at one point you signed to Empire. Yep. Yeah. Okay, are you still signing it to Empire? Yeah, shout out Gazi. Yeah, that's my man. Yeah. Bay Area too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, Gazi's a real one. Yep. Uh, and, and the first rapper you actually met was Mozzie. Yeah. Pretty, about, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Right, because you talked about some of the, the favorite rappers growing up. Mozzie, Lil Wayne, Mac Dre, and Woody. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Woody's an interesting one. I, I never met him. The jacket too. Yeah. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that, that was my sure. little homie yeah. right there, man. For real? Oh, yeah, that killed me when when he died. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, because I I had done a rest documentary. Rest in peace, Woody too. Yeah, yeah. well, I was, I'm gonna talk about Woody in a second. Um, but but jacket was actually we had interviewed him, and when I did uh, my documentary Ghost Ride the Whip, he was on that. That's dope. And that was like, the documentary. About I need the to watch that. Movement. Yeah, yeah, that was my first documentary. Um, it's kind of like a, like a love letter to the Bay basically you know do you know about Woody's whole story and everything uh not not like the whole thing I just know he was like inspirational to me you know f from what I've seen but I don't really know all the details I mean shout out Big Tone he told me a little bit but uh I don't really know you know what I mean all the details like that yeah well yeah I mean he allegedly took his own life okay I know I heard that yeah but they're not quite sure yeah. They were saying he was going through depression because one of his homies was serving life for something he allegedly did. That's another one of those unsure kind of situations. Um, you know, there are stories that he left a will, you know, and that's okay. also yeah. kind of really fuzzy. Yeah, I ain't hear and that. then at one point in 2018, they actually took his grave headstone. They actually stole it. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know about that? Nah, I didn't know about that. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they actually That's took his up. gravestone uh, at a Holy Cross Cemetery in Antioch. Damn. Yeah. I know about that. Yeah. I mean, when you hear things of like, you know, because people beef and, you know, there's rap beef, there's actual beef. But when, when people start disrespecting dead people and so forth. Yes. Well, what's your take on that? I don't really like that. That's not, that's not, uh... Like, you don't really get no cool points for that because it's like, they already passed. Just let the family grieve, you know what I mean? Because we've all had to grieve before. We all seen our family grieve before, so you don't want your family uh, having to grieve. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't want nobody bothering them like that. So, yeah, I'm not really with all that, uh, you know. I might have, I don't know, maybe I said something in one of my songs before, but, like, I'm not really heavy on that, though, to be honest, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I was cool with Fulio. You know, oh, uh, oh, fully, yeah, yep. Yeah, I've been who seeing that. Recently yeah. And yeah, him and Young and Ace, those crews were constantly fuck your dead homie, fuck your dead homie videos. I know it's just more of a trend in other places, yeah, like videos yeah. of pissing on graves and you yeah. know, like yeah. that type of shit. And, and it's just like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not, I'm it's not just with unnecessary. All that. Yeah, that's not I, me. I feel yeah, it. and growing up, I mean, yeah, Tupac said that's why I fucked your bitch, but. 
that's pretty much where it stopped. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, and I heard that really happened. So yeah. it, it is what it is. But the, yeah. whole, the whole dead thing, the whole kids thing, like, all that I just found, I just find it foul. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't like, I ain't with, like, disrespecting families. Definitely no women or kids. Like, that's just not my style. You know what I'm saying? Just with whoever the target is, just focus on them and that's it. You know what I mean? Well, like, what I didn't realize was in San Jose, you have both Dorteños and Sereños. There's everything out there, yeah. See, I, I always thought that there was a lie. Was it Bakersfield? And people yeah, pretty it's, much Yeah, it's to just the... different in Northern Cali, you know? Northern huh. Cali's just real. We just got everything that's diverse in Northern Cali. Maybe not every single city, but yeah, San Jose, we're real diverse. We got every type of walk of life out there you could think of. The Bay Area is a diverse period, but yeah, yeah, for sure, San Jose is everything out there. Yeah, you can run into anything. Uh, every every few street lights, the vibe changes, you know. But you personally, you've never collaborated with Southern California Latino rappers. Uh, like 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 gang related ones? Nah, yeah. nah, that would never happen. I, I'll never do that. Yeah. I'd interview John Boxer Mendoza. Boxer. Um, not he was sure. uh, a Norteño dude who ended up cooperating oh, at okay. one point. Okay. And he said there's currently a peace treaty going on, at least in the prisons. Yeah, I can't speak on that. Yeah. I mean, do you think that at one point everyone will just get over the past and say, we understand that there's a history of this, but it's not helping? You know what I mean? Like, like, it's becoming multi-generational. I get your point of view. It's, it's now decades and decades and decades. And, you know, like, for example, I interviewed Danny Trejo. You know, that yes, is the actor. The yep. actor. Yeah. And he, you know, was friends with the founders of the Mexican mafia and stuff I, like I watched that, that interview. Yeah. yeah. You know, he talked about how it all started. It was like the, the war of the slippers and stuff like that. And it was like most people who are mixed up in this these days don't know anyone of where it started and don't really even know the whole reason, but but there's a lot of violence that keeps occurring. Do you think that at one point everyone could just come together? Because, you know, because at one point, let me tell you, I remember in the 90s in L.A., Crips and Blood rappers couldn't, couldn't record together at all. Yeah. Right? DJ Quick might have had the best beats, but if you're a Crip, you can't go to that studio, you can't do songs with them. Then YG and Nipsey kind of made it a point to say, okay, we're gonna put this to the side and we're gonna start collaborating with each other and actually become friends. And I remember I interviewed Big U. He was one of the kind of the architects of this. And like when they would film videos, he'd make sure that like no one's name or hood was crossed out in the background in any shots to, you know, to just not aggravate things any further. And now I feel like in LA, it's not really that big of a deal for Crips and Bloods to, to work together and get money together and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Do, do you think that at some point in the future, um, Mexicans could accomplish this? I mean, I don't know anything's possible, but for me, it's like, it's more like how I grew up, things I went through with certain individuals. I just choose to stay away from all that. You know, that's me personally. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think so, but anything's possible, you know? I mean, we're in L.A. right now. Yeah. Do, do you feel like you have to look over your shoulder when you're out here? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, but I also have two back home. The only difference is um, I can't make a call and have 50 people pull up real quick, you know? That's, right. like, really the uh, only difference. Come yeah. pretty deep today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I, that's really not deep. Like, I don't know if you see, like, my videos and stuff. Like, oh, yeah, no, like we be deep as fuck. It's not deep uh, like that. If I'm going to do an interview, I don't come that deep because uh, it's an interview. You don't want to show respect. I don't want to yeah. be too crazy packed. I, I I did the same amount at No Jumper here. Yeah. Same people, too, pretty much. Yeah. Have you ever done shows in L.A.? No, no. Would you do a show in L.A. if you got booked? Uh, If... If the situation was like a good professional situation, I, I I damn near pull up anywhere, you know. I am getting hit up like by the surrounding states now, so I mean nothing's been locked in, but they're tapping in right now. Yeah. 
Have you ever had a situation doing a show where something happened, where some knucklehead in the audience started to... Man, to be honest, my, my shows have always been nothing but love. Luckily, it's always love. Like, you know, there's been little things here and there, but nothing that really messed the the night up. You know what I mean? Little bullshit. Uh, a lot of times, it ain't even involving me. It's some other people I don't even know. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got drunk people here and there. You know, you got to check them real quick. But nah, to be honest, ain't nothing crazy like that happen luckily you and lefty gunplay have had some back and forth yeah frank what did that start over uh one day i just woke up and he was just saying hey fuck lazy boy i i didn't even know where it came from i was like what like it was, it was nothing that happened before it was just random i don't know why i think he was like doing a little interview outside like a little like quick five minute interview or something, some guy standing on the street. And uh uh I think he said something like, they ain't gonna come down here, they know better. But the funny part was I already had no jumper booked and he said that like three days before I came down here. That was my first time down here. Yeah, but man, like honestly he just smoked out, man. I, I was just having fun. You know what I'm saying? Playing right. back a little bit. Right, yeah. you responded a little bit here and there, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't start nothing. I'll respond, but I won't start it. But but then I started seeing, so me and him do that. It goes viral. We start trending on TikTok and all that, right? And uh, I, uh, all of a sudden, I see all the other guys saying, oh, shit, I'm going to dish lazy, too, so he could make me go viral, too. <laughs> but I was like, nah, it ain't that easy. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a lot of them that talk about me, but uh, I'm not going to respond to every single one. You know, I try to make every move like every move has to feel right to me. I don't, I don't like doing goofy shit or nothing. But like I said, I'm not going to start nothing. I don't I don't never hate on no man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a real player. Like, I'm not a hater like that. You know, but if you talk about me first, then I'm responding. So to me, that's fair. But I'm not just going to go on my way to hate on somebody who never said nothing about me, you know. But is it really serious? I mean, I've I've gone back and forth with people on the Internet and then we get on the phone and laugh it off and do an interview together. Oh, yeah, we you ain't doing nothing together. Yeah, we're no, not, so we're not getting happen. on no phones, nothing. Yeah, nah. Nah? Nah. Uh, Bozo dissed you during his Cam Capone interview. Yeah, he, he's like one of the goofiest ones to me. He's just always, I don't, I don't know nothing about him, but every time I'll see a little clip of his interview, he just gives me that feeling like everything he's saying is a lie, like he be making up stories in his interviews. I know a couple stories that he said he tried to say about some people my way, and they actually dug into the situation and found that it was a lie. He tried to look cool on the camera acting like he got busy, but, but yeah, he's another one like I never mentioned him. I know he's not even popping. He's a nobody. His his videos do no no numbers, nothing. I'm not saying it's all about numbers, but that's why he does it. He wants the attention. He wants somebody to bite back so he could get his numbers up. Yeah. Yeah, man, the internet, internet's ugly, man. Like I've, yeah, I've been called all types of stuff. There, there's videos of you, like, which looks fake about you and a transgender. Yeah, that's man. That's one of like the hundred lies that've been made up about me, man. I, I've had everything in the book made up about me at this point. Yeah, yeah. I and I'm never gonna respond to no, no like false. Uh, false story, or nothing, because that's what they want you to do. You know what I mean? Oh, I've had some I'll, of these rumors around some me real too, shit. man. Yeah. My thing is like, yo, bring bring them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring man. that person out. Man, I've, I, 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 I'll address it. I've seen people say, oh, we got footage of this, footage of that. But obviously, you know what I mean? That it's a lie. Like, ain't 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 no smut on my name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. I, when I saw it, I'm like, okay, this is obviously fake. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's a lot of people trying to, like, start YouTube careers, you know? Yeah. So what they do is they'll see, oh, who's who's popping in my area or whatever. And uh, the guy who made it up, I don't know him from a can of paint. Like, yeah, you know what I mean, at all. Like, well, uh, your biggest song right now is Bluebird. I would say so. Yeah. yeah. Now, when I heard it, I'm like, OK, I've, I've heard this this chorus before. Yeah. RBL. Shout Posse. out RBL. Yeah. Right. They actually sent me a message, said, good job. You know what I mean? So if it was dope getting their, you know what I mean? Their approval on that, yeah. Yeah, I, I interviewed the the surviving member. Oh, uh, yeah. Of, of RBL. Yeah. Um, legendary group from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, so was that like an homage to RBL in a way? Like, definitely, yeah. Like, that's where I got the idea from. Yep. So 
what exactly, because even when I heard the RBL version back in the day, I never quite understood what it meant. So in their song, they're talking about the cops. Oh. The boys in blue, you know what I'm saying? Right, because you said there's a bluebird on my so shoulder. So I figured I'll put it? my own twist on it, you know, and everybody will kind of know. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, we didn't use their beat or none. It's an original beat. Yeah. Uh, my producer, Fangas, made it. Shout out, Fangas. But yeah, uh, I was just in the studio. The verses were done already. And I, I just started saying there's a bluebird on my shoulder. I don't know why. I just thought of it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to bring that shit back, you know? Yeah. Give it a whole new life in the new generation. That's what, yeah, so. Well, but, you know, part of the reason why I think it's the most popular song is because you take shots of people Yeah. in the song. Uh, Do you uh, actually name them by name or you just yeah, kind of? I, I name them by name, but everybody I mentioned talked about me. You know what I mean? Uh, so it was more responses. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I would call it. So who did you actually name in the song? Uh... Uh, lefty, you a bitch. Nah, I really did it. Uh, oh, little weirdo, you a mark, so don't talk about me. Cheat don't know better, he don't talk about me. And then, uh, Bo, uh, Bozo could get it too. You a pussy, you be lying in the interviews. Yeah, those are all the names I think, yeah. Are these all guys from Southern California? Most of them, yeah. Okay. Have you talked to any of them since that song came out? No, nah, hell no. We don't know talking. No, so, so, you, so, so there's no, you know what I mean? Because look, like I, I understand, and, and this is sometimes the unfortunate part of hip hop. Yeah. You know, you can look at Fool You and Young and Ace. Yeah. They have lots of songs, but the songs where they're like really dissing their ops, like the Who I Smoke and stuff like that, those are the 50 million views and everything else like that. Oh, the reason, I don't mean to cut you off, the reason okay. it started with them talking about me is the No Jumper interview, pretty much they were mad that I came down and, and that I was invited to with Adam 22. No, people just didn't like it. That's what it all started over. And now I remember that's what it was. Okay. Well, I mean, you're in LA right now. You're invited here also. Yeah. And I yeah. told you it's going to be a nice, safe environment. Yeah, for so, sure. I think, I think you even hit one of my people and say, hey, man, there's going to be any other, yeah. any of my ops here? I'm like, no. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> let me make it clear. Let here. me make it clear too, because I know how these trolls be. When I call and say that, I'm not worried about my safety. I, I'm saying out of respect for you yeah. and your your staff. Yeah. Because I'm gonna keep it a hundred. If I walk up in here and there's somebody in here, it'll get cracking. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I say that out of respect. I'm pulling up even if you would have said, Oh, there might be a couple, I'm still coming. I'm not gonna change the day. Yeah. So let me make that clear because these that. trolls be you know what I'm we, saying? we would never have yeah. I mean, in fact, we only usually do one interview per day. Yeah. So we never even have a a possibility of people. And, and I've been people. watching you long enough anyway, like I already, I, I know you're like real professional. Yeah. Just the way the interviews look, the questions you ask, like, you know what I mean? I say it's your interviews are more professional than a lot of other ones. So I wasn't even, that wasn't even a thought, but I was like, you know what? Just out of respect for them. Let me yeah. make sure I say, it. cause what if you're like, oh, I don't know about that shit. You know what I mean? Like you might, there's a chance you might not really know. So just out of respect for you guys, I said it, yeah. Yeah, no, we had a situation like that some years back. Mm -hmm. where I interviewed this dude named Tariq Nasheed and then I interviewed this dude named Tommy Sotomayor. I didn't know the two of them were beefing. Oh, okay. I, I honestly didn't. Yeah. And Tommy was on Instagram. Yeah, I'm going to see Vlad today. I just flew in. I got my interview at this time. Rah, rah. Motherfucking Tariq storms into the fucking room. Damn. This is back before all the doors were locked and we had security and oh, everything because okay. this yeah. was like the early days of mm -hmm. Vlad TV and motherfucker just storms in and confronts him on camera and I'm like, I don't yeah. know what the fuck happened. Tell me, you set me up. No, I didn't know this was happening. Like, you know. It's on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Damn, and I'm then gonna look like, Yeah, and then, but, but, but Tariq thought that I purposely brought him in to trash him and I'm like, yeah. when you see, I'm going to release this interview and you'll see that I don't even mention you. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, shit gets fucked yeah, up. Yeah, and and uh, the main thing I think when I call and say that is because I don't want to burn my relationship with you the first time you meet me is some dumb shit happening. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it, it's it's not for, for my safety at all. I'll pull up anywhere that I need to go. You know what I mean? But it's to show respect to the ones inviting me. I mean, your house or your yeah. place of business. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Now, you said that uh, a lot of Southern rappers you know, in general, have taken kind of the Northern Cali style. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, um, on. you know, we talked about, um, I interviewed him from a Shoreline Mafia, OGZ. Yeah. 
And he's actually referenced that before, said that, yeah, you know, that I was influenced by a lot of Northern Cali rappers. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, like he showed love. Yeah, I've seen him show, like, I mean, salute up north. Yeah. Do you, and I feel like in general, like, and I'm from the Bay, the Northern California rappers don't get as much kind of na nationwide looks yeah. as Southern California rappers. Yeah. I feel like right now is like our biggest time as yeah. a whole, as a whole. Yeah, but you're right though. Yeah, we. Well, well, but I mean, I mean, there's well, I mean, I don't know if you could say that because in the past you've had MC Hammer. Oh, I thought you meant Northern oh, Mexican. Oh, just Mexicans. Oh, that's well, what I thought okay, you. Well, meant. Hold on, so, so let's talk about this. So, yeah, no, you're right in that sense. Okay, yeah, that's that, what yeah, I thought you meant. Yeah, because Northern yeah. California Mexican rappers. Because people have always said, well, how come you only interview uh, Serenios? And I'm like, because there's just more Sereno rappers that are like, have bigger profiles, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Northern California. Yeah. I go out of my way yeah. to support Northern Cali, yeah. but I also can't bring on someone that just doesn't really have a big following. You know, I'm saying that doesn't do any of us any yeah. good. But you're right. Like, like who, who was like, who would you think was the biggest Northern California Mexican Woody. rappers? Woody. So it's always been Woody. To me. In, in my eyes, it's always Woody. Yeah. I don't think nobody could really top that. You know what I mean? What was it about Woody do you think that really stood out like that? Uh, he's, uh, his his bars, first of all, he's like real intelligent with the, you know what I mean? Like he really could put his words together, the wordplay. Um, and I'm not from where he's from, but to my knowledge, he's really one of them boys out there too, you know? So. But Woody was still very much underground. Yeah. He didn't have big... Yeah, radio songs and stuff. And like social that. media, I don't think was really no, 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 popping no, not at, at all. all, right? Yeah. But like, yeah, in Southern California, I mean, you had I mean, you can go back to, you know, MC Frost. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yep. saying? Sounds like La Raza and stuff like that. Um, I mean, you got Cypress Hill. Yeah. You know, they they were. I mean, you know, Be Real was a. Yeah, yeah. So he wasn't really affiliated with that, but they he's were still, still Mexican, sort of, but yeah, they were still so like Mexican. He, he's and, still putting and, on for the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th th they definitely represented that whole that whole lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But you're right, Northern California. You. Really but the way had... you were saying it, uh, that when I took the question wrong, you're also right. The way you were saying it, yeah. There's been huge Northern California rappers or black rappers for sure. Yeah. MC Hammer. Yeah. E forty, Mac Dre, too Mac short, Dre, too short, Filthy Rich, yeah, yeah, it's been a lot. Do you feel like it's just hard to get on? Yeah, I feel like we don't have a lot of uh, like we don't got no labels out there. Empire, shout out Gazi, but that's really a distribution label. But yeah. but Gazi really busts big moves for people though. But besides him, if you don't know Thizzler and Empire, I mean, there's really nowhere nowhere else to really get tied in with. Yeah, but we're really known to have like that independent hustle. Yeah. We just don't got a lot of media places. We don't got Hollywood movies being shot in our areas. Like all those things, you know what I mean? Probably make it easier, you know? So, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I feel like a lot of the real standout talents in Northern California end up moving to LA or New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember trying to do my thing as a DJ in the Bay. And after a while, I'm like, this isn't going to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, all the dudes that. I'm looking up to that are doing all the hot clubs are living with their moms. And I'm like, nah, like, this is not what I aspire to. I got to do it big. And I realized in 2002, I wasn't going to be able to do it in the Bay. So I just up and moved to New York. Yeah, I always thought you were all your interviews were shot in New York. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. I have a big studio in New York. Oh, okay. I lived there. Yeah, I mean, Vlad TV was essentially launched in New York. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, properly, and I lived out there for ten years, and then I moved to LA in 2013. So then the next ten years were in LA, but I still maintained yeah. New York. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing about the Bay is that there's really no industry; it's all independent. People got yep. their own independent hustle with their own little crews, but. You're right. Thizzler is probably the biggest hip hop media outlet in the Bay, and it's not as big as some of these other, yeah. you know, big media outlets. And then on top of that, all the politics also make it to where not everybody just comes together. You know what I mean? So it's that too makes it even harder. 
Yeah. Well, you had a situation where uh, you couldn't work with a known rapper because one of his homies had like paperwork on him. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can you yeah. say who it is? Uh, nah. I, the only reason I want to say who it is because. Uh, the person who was lining it up, I don't know if they want me saying who it is because then it might, I don't know if they want the heat because then those people might call. I just don't, you know what I'm saying? But I will say the the rapper, right? The only reason, because you might be like, well, why were you tripping? It wasn't him. It was his friend. But his friend was somebody he's always posting every week. You know what I'm saying? Like always shouting him out in the songs. So I was like, okay, he really stands by him. And if you got if you got bad paperwork, man, it's like uh, it's just a no no. You know what I mean? Well, the bad paperwork you were talking about was messing with underage girls. Yep. It wasn't snitching. It was. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I don't know if he ever did tell her or whatnot, but I know but it's under, the, underage the underage girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, this reminds me of the South Park Mexican situation. Oh, good. So I don't know if you're talking about Baby Bash or not. Baby Bash, no. Okay, you're not. Because um, Baby Bash yeah. used to be signed to South Park Mexican. Yeah, no, not Baby Bash, yeah. Okay, I so I don't know what you're talking about, yeah, impulsing no. or whatever. Yeah, no, not Baby Bash, no. Okay, got yeah. it. Um, and I, I remember me and Baby Bash had a long conversation about this on camera. I think I've seen that yeah, one. Yeah, whereas like, South Park Mexico was like the biggest thing in Texas at one point. But then, he went to a strip club ended up sleeping with a girl that he met at the strip club. The strip clubs are, of course, 18 and up. Yep. The girl ended up being like 13. Mm. She had a baby. Later on, it came out. You know, they, they put the, the numbers together. Yeah, okay. They, they lined yeah. up. Then there were some other situations where he allegedly, like, molested, like, his stepdaughter. Oh, so he like did that. it multiple times. Yeah. It was a multiple time situation, and he had, like, 30 years or something. Yeah. He got just a hellacious amount of time. And yeah. I remember a lot of people were like, yo, you should interview him. And I'm like, nah. yeah, him too. Like a lot of people support him. I know he's like really big out there, but it's like the way I will always tell people, like, it's like, what if that was your daughter? What if that was your shit? You know what I mean? I, well, I always look at shit like that. 13. Like, like, honestly, like, I don't care yeah. if you meet her at a strip club. You know that this yeah, girl's not up. fucking 18. Yeah. Like, like, you know what I mean? I can There's imagine no 17 or something, you know, maybe if she's kind of tall, but like a 13-year-old. There's no excuse. It's a fucking 13-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, you can't yeah. talk your way out of this But one. it's crazy. I, even him, like I said, I see people still, like, supporting that. Um, I don't know. Maybe they just don't go by the same morals or something but yeah that's that's all bad too so basically if he gets out and wants to do a song with you nah nah, nah. nah. you got bad paperwork it's it's just not even a conversation you know what I mean yeah would you work with Gunna uh I, I see a lot of internet shit about him. If he really ratted, no. Like, well, I mean, you, know, but you I, saw the video though, right? Nah, nah well okay I, so, so here, here's, have, here's what happened yeah. right so he was locked up with an Enrico with Young Thug and everyone else, right? Yeah, yeah. But he basically didn't do anything. He was just arrested in a car with some other people mm -hmm. and that type of thing. So he was offered a plea deal. And in the plea deal, they asked him whether YSL is a criminal gang. And he said, yes, ma'am. Oh, that's telling. And he said, yeah. have you seen members of YSL engage in activities in furtherance of the gang? Yes, ma'am. So let me tell you the excuse people always use to say he didn't tell is they'll say it in the interrogation room, but maybe they don't show up to court. So they'll be like, oh, he never got nobody locked up. But that don't matter. Even if what you say doesn't convict nobody, once you say it, that's telling. Like, yeah, you know I mean, so a lot of people argue with that, but those are squares that don't really know. They don't know the rules. You know what I mean? But that's telling. And that's not even a diss. Nobody owed it, but that's really telling. You know what I mean? Okay, so knowing what I just told you, he reached out to you, and he's he's hot to death right now. Uh, man, I, I can't. No. It's, it's yeah. It's not even like a pride thing or nothing. It's just like I just can't do stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you even said that if you get pulled over with a couple of guys and they find a gun, and you say that's not my gun, you're saying that's snitching. That's a form of it, yeah. That's that's that'll for sure be frowned upon. Yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna look good saying that. Uh, the best thing to say uh, for all the kids watching and stuff 
is you just say, hey, if I'm being charged, I, I'm, I need my lawyer. That's, That's all you it. say. That's it. And it's actually safer for you in the long run, uh, like for your conviction and everything. When you lawyer up right away, your case usually will always be better than hmm. it would have been if you didn't, if you start saying shit. Um, oh, but I just remember Lil Dirk, uh, he gave, wasn't he the one that gave, oh no, that was a different rapper. Lil Dirk gave another rapper his money back after he found out he snitched. Yeah, I heard about I, I was thinking that was gonna, but not somebody yeah, else. Was, yeah, I think it was Dirk, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So have you had people snitch on you? N no, uh, I mean, I've had people say my name in cases, but I never, I never, uh, I never like got pulled in for it, but I've for sure seen a, a few people tell that I grew up around, yeah. Okay, so this would be a close friend of yours mm -hmm. who gets jammed up mm -hmm. and uses his get out jail free card by telling on someone. Yeah, 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 that's happened a couple times growing up, yeah. Okay. Did You're you asking ever, me, has it happened? Yeah, yeah, happened. yeah. Did you ever talk to that person afterwards? No, never. So that's it, that person becomes dead to you? Dead to me. Yeah. So you yourself. Mm. Let's just say your next door neighbor is killing little kids. Would you call the police on him? You have Jeffrey Dahmer living next door to you. He's eating I'm, kids. I'm not calling the cops on nobody, but... We're, we're going to get them up out of there, though. You know what I'm saying? But not with the police, though. You know what I mean? So you do it yourself? I'll do it myself before I call the cops. Yeah. So, obviously, if I see a little kid being hurt or kidnapped, or, like, I'm going to help that kid. If it's right in front of my face, that's a little kid. But I'm, get no, I mean, yeah, I get I'm not well, going to call the cops. Well, you, you, everyone reacts in yeah. that type of way. I, and then the spur of the moment, you see a, a kid getting hurt, obviously, you being a father. Yeah, for you know, sure. You, you want to jump into that situation, Like right? a regular civilian? Yeah. I... I I completely understand them calling the cops. Me, lazy boy, I'm not calling the cops, but I, I'm also not just going to sit there and let them do it. I'm going to walk up on them, you know what I'm saying? Gather the troops, whatever, get them up out of there. You know, he won't be there. Right, but you now risk your own freedom by doing that, yeah. right? In the eyes of your community, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. In the eyes of the law, you could have, you're potentially going to get charged with murder if you end up killing this guy. Yeah. Even though he deserved it, and everyone would be like, yeah, good job. Yeah. But you would still go to court and you would still be found guilty of murder, especially if it's if you planned it out, you'd have premeditated murder and everything else like yeah. that. So you're saying that you would risk your own life, your be own freedom? Before I call the cops, I'll risk my freedom. So you, would you call the cops for any reason whatsoever? If your house got broken into and you need to claim it with your insurance company. I'll have a girl do it or something. <laughs> But it's your house. You would right. have to ultimately yeah. sign. Calling the ambulance is cool. Like, hey, I need an ambulance. Uh, my, you know, my family member had a heart attack, something like that. That's the ambulance, you know. But now listen, I interviewed Tony Yayo, and he was telling me a situation where his dad was having a heart attack, and he couldn't bring himself to call 911. Yeah. Luckily, there was other family members in the house that just grabbed the phone away from him and, and did it. And, and it has been situations where we got to call the ambulance. I still don't do it. I, I just have a, you know, a, a girl family member or somebody else. Call. I don't even like calling the ambulance either. But, it, I mean, if you got to call the ambulance, that's not a cop. You know what I'm saying? They're there to help you not die. But calling the cops, I'm not calling the cops. Nah. For nothing. Nope. For nothing. Nothing in the world to make me call the cops. I just live by a certain code. You know what I mean? It's a lot yeah. of people that do it, ain't no, just I me. Mean, I mean, yeah. I, I don't personally agree with it, but I also don't live the life that yeah. you live. Yeah, you know which is saying? understandable. You know, yeah. like, and I've said this before, if, if, let's just say, someone I knew, you know, had done a serious crime and I'm being accused for it and I had nothing to do with it and he's not saying anything, I'm not going to sit there and do 20 years for him Yeah. when I didn't do shit. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But you also didn't sign up for that type of life. But once we sign up for some, you know what I mean, it's you're taking an oath. I mean, it ain't always going to be fair. You so, know what I mean? So you would do 10 years for somebody over something you didn't do? I'm not I'm not telling on nobody. For no I, reason I'm whatsoever. Not, no reason. I ain't tell what comes with it, so, comes with so, it. I so pray someone it don't. You know, so someone you know is letting you go to prison for them. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like but don't you think that's 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 foul? Uh, it might be foul. But have you, you ever seen that happen? Have you ever tell, seen like you know any of your I mean? friends go to jail for something they didn't do? Yep. 
Yep. And they refused to tell. Yep. How did the person who actually did the crime react to it? Uh, They're living outside, living their life, yeah, girls, I'm not, Yeah, I'm not really partying. sure, but, but they definitely- I'm not asking to name names, I'm yeah, just yeah, saying. They like, definitely, you got, you. If, if that is you, you, make sure you take care of the homie. I mean, make sure you're always there for, I mean, that's like that the, really the happen, minimum man. you could do, you know what I mean? But yeah. shit happens though, like, like, let's say that did happen where you said that he's not going to take it. He's not going to hate him because of that, because he knows it could have easily been the other way around. It's just part of part of this street shit. It happens. You know what I mean? Um, it sucks, but it's part of the game that that's that's why when you jump in this shit, it ain't no game like it's serious. It ain't nothing to play with because that could happen. And you got to know that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you had a situation uh, with Tory Lanez. Yeah, shout out Tory Lanez because we worked it out. Make yeah. sure I say that. So yeah. uh, one of your friends had booked him for an appearance. Yeah, is he yeah. right there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you homie right there. Yeah. Okay, shout out my boy. He, he booked him for a show. Put down a deposit. Yep. Put Tory down a chunky deposit. Yeah. Yeah. Tory never shows up. So, I'm not the internet type. I don't do like I don't do for attention if I do something it's because I really believe in it and stand on it so I knew if my boy was to say something his voice isn't going to be heard like my voice right so I felt like man if I had these type of you know uh these type of blessings about me where I have a voice and stuff like that I got to use it for good so I said hey man I'm gonna uh I'm gonna I'm gonna get it get at Tory Lanez right so I think first it was a DM or a comment. I got no response, right? Which is understandable. He probably got a bunch of messages. So I said, all right, I'm going to have to make a post and I'll have to, I'll have to let my fan base get a hold of him. So, yeah, so uh, he he sends me a DM. I think the exact words was... Whoa, 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 hold up. Oh, before, yeah. before, before you say that, you made a video where you banned him from the bay. Yeah, until he fixes that. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean... It sounds good on the internet, but you can't really ban someone. I don't know if I said the word ban. I think I said if you come out here, you got to answer. I think it was something like that. You could come. I can't stop you from right. getting in the driving on the freeway once you get through the city limits. I can't stop that. But yeah. you, if you do any events out here, we're gonna come up to. I mean, get to the bottom of it. We're gonna walk up and get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that had he shown up to the bay the next day, yeah, you guys would have hundred percent. Yeah, it doesn't mean we're in no type of I it, it it could be something as simple as, oh, hey, bros, a misunderstanding, here you go. Or hey, let me let me get my uh my manager to PayPal. Like, you know what I mean? It could have been right. a talk. But either way, that had to get fixed, which like I said, he fixed it. So shout right. out to him. Well, well he DM'd you. Oh yeah. So I get a DM the next day and I think it says, I ain't no fuck boy or something like that. It said, I ain't no fuck boy, call me. So I go, All right, cool. So I call him. And honestly, uh, he was real cool and real respectful. And he told me, he said, damn, he said, lazy boy. I said, yeah. He said, man, I don't know who you are. I never heard of you. He said, but you must be somebody where you're from because your fans my will not stop hitting my phone for 24 hours straight. He said all day. He And he said, once I gave him my version of the story, it was really a misunderstanding with his management or something. But once I gave him my version, he told me he respected me and that he would have did the same in my shoes. Once he told me that, I was like, damn, Tori's hella cool. Like, I actually like like Tori after after we talked. Yeah. All right, because it wasn't him. It, it wasn't was him. Someone else. Someone else. Basically scamming people yep. on his behalf. Yeah. What's funny is the same thing happened to us recently. Did it? With uh, Boss Man D'Lo. Okay. You know, who's a pretty big rapper right yeah. now. One of the guys who uh, does a lot of booking, he's been booking for me for like 10 years. He approached me and was like, yo, I got Boss Man D'Lo but they just want a small deposit. And the deposit was so low that I said, this, this just sounds janky. Sounds fishy, yeah. Are you 100% sure that this has come from him? No, I'm telling you, they called me from the phone number that's on his, on, on his official Instagram mm -hmm. page and everything else like that. It's all legit. I said, all right, I, it still sounds fishy, so I, I'll pay this, but if it ends up falling through, you're going to have to cover it yourself. So it's no money out of my, my pocket. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm sure of it. Sure enough, we pay the deposit. Then they come back. Oh, we, we didn't know it was in person. That's not enough. We're going to need oh, triple man. the amount you just sent. 
I'm like, fine, just have them send the money. No, we're not sending it back. So I made up. I, I went on Twitter, <laughs> you know, in the same way that, you know, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. You know, I basically was like, yo, boss man, d you're not being a very good boss right now by letting people around you take deposits and not returning them. And he's like, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. So the actual manager got on the phone with me and we had a conversation and she explained to me that the phone number that was listed on there had been compromised oh. and multiple people were approaching her with the same kind of story that I was. A bunch you know of people saying? got scammed. So I, I met him personally. Oh. Yeah, I forgot to say that part. They actually linked up and chopped it up before. So that's why we were... Came up to oh. It was a little more serious. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're yeah, actually... You're, right. So you're knowing that you're dealing direct. See, with us, what I found out after the fact is that you could actually fake phone numbers that you calling from. Oh, okay. So you know what I'm saying? Like, I could get your phone number and call someone from your phone number. Is it like an app or something like that? I don't, I don't yeah. know. I've never yeah. heard of this before. This this was new to me. All the crazy technology now, I believe yeah. it, yeah. You could basically call from anyone else's number. Now, if you call them back, it's not gonna work. Okay. But my guy didn't call the guy back, so. We were both just kind of fooled. So when I found out that happened, I said, all right. I had to go on Twitter and say, listen, I just talked to the real manager. This is what happened. Yeah. But, and they, but they removed that phone number off the profile. Okay. I said, they've just removed that phone number, but they they you know, they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You know. That's what's tricky about like the internet with the payments and shit. Like if you never met the person, you're kind of taking a chance. Yeah, you know no, I'm mean? gonna file a police report. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I got no problems calling them. Yeah, because, I mean, we're, 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 you know, well, my man is out that money. It's not me. Yeah. We spent money on studio, though. We're going to be out that. But, yeah. you know, I, I had to sell someone that money. So whoever got that money is going to get charged with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know who the f this is. Like, what's, he on there? What, what's that? Selena Powell was doing it with his manager. Selena Powell? And by Ray was his manager. Yeah, that's the thing with him. We end up finding out she was involved in taking that. Yeah. Selena Powell's scamming people? Yeah. That's what we were he told. Like, his manager. Really? Yeah, he thanked us after because we got to the bottom. <laughs> 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 well, no, they, they thanked me too. Like, yeah. Dilo's manager was like, yo, thank you for, you know, we're taking this phone number yeah. down. Like, like, and then other people start DMing me. It was like, yo, bro, like, they approached me with this. They're showing me emails. Yeah. They're approaching me with the same. Yeah. So pretty much if you never would have yeah, posted about it. If I didn't do, it, if I didn't jump out the window the way I did, yeah. that more number people would have shut down. Scammed. Everybody would have been getting now scammed. Now yeah. it's out there, yeah. that scam is is done. Yeah. And uh, honestly, like I said, I'm going to file a police report. And whoever I sent that money yeah, to Yeah, like I said, the charged. walk of life you're from, for sure, yeah. do what you got to do. Me, I don't call so, you know, so someone ripped you off, you wouldn't call the police. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Yeah. You ever heard of FTX? FTX. FTX is a huge crypto okay, yeah, company. Yeah, I was like, those letters familiar. Yeah. Yeah. The dude scammed. It's the biggest scam ever. He's doing like, I don't know, 20 years. He, he took like $10 billion. Damn. French Montana woke up one morning and saw $5 million missing from his FTX account. He said he cried actual tears when he saw this. That must hurt, yeah. Five million. This is not a, a drug transaction. This is you putting your money into a company that's got Super Bowl commercials. Yeah. That matter of fact, I believe like they had like a FTX was, had an arena named after them. Like, like a trusted paid, company. A, yeah. a trusted company in this space. Larry David's doing, like I think like all these celebrities are doing Super Bowl commercials. Five million dollars missing out of his account. So you you mean to tell me if that happened to you, you wouldn't call the police? You wouldn't file a police report to try to get your five million back? I, I I'm not filing no police report. Like my reputation means more to me than anything. But it's, this is not this is not a criminal situation on any level. This is a fight. This is financial theft. This is cyber theft. Yeah, me personally, with my name in my hands, I'm not doing it. That's just you know what I mean. Uh, I and know they're telling it was, you it you was can't sucked, get your money not. back. Because here's the thing. When, when this happens, when these types of huge financial crimes happen, mm. th th there will be a task force assigned to it, and they'll go through everyone who actually filed reports who lost money, and they'll get 
usually the majority of the money back eventually. Yeah. Yes, so it'll but actually. If, but help. if you don't ever file a report, you won't get anything back. So you yourself will take whatever that financial loss is. I mean, that's what I was saying earlier. Is like when you when you make a promise to something. It's not all when when those times come and shit hits the fan. It ain't always gonna be in your favor, and that's that's what you're deciding to do. Like, okay, even if this really sucks for me, I still gotta stick to the code. Like, you know. Yeah, I mean, it does limit you though, life. Yeah, yeah. Do you expect your kids to follow the same code? No, no. My, I mean, first off, uh. I don't have sons. I feel like that's kind of, you know. Uh, no, nah, but you see, you see I girls, did, man. Yeah, you yeah, see girls sure. get more crazy than, you know. Man, but but to be honest, they're not going to be, like, involved in no type of gang stuff. And, um, and they don't even really need to know about the code. But I will admit one thing, though. Um, I told my daughter, uh, like, don't tell on people to the teachers. Just tell me after school hmm. and and I'll talk to the parents or whatever, right? So um, one time uh, she got punched by some boy, right? Like he was playing, but I think he knocked the wind out of her. She was crying, whatever, right? The teachers came up, said, what's wrong? Why are you crying? She would not tell on him for the life of her, like, you know? And I was like, damn, like I told her not to tell. She didn't tell. But she Ooh. told me after school, you know, I talked to, I've had to talk to parents like maybe three, four times before. It always is real cool with the parents. But uh, but yeah, she she stuck to the code and she didn't really have to. It's like that shit's just really in her blood, I guess. But 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 see, the reason I said that it's not to lead her towards no type of negative life. It's because I know if you're a kid and you tell on a teacher that tattletale name, that's gonna stick with you all the way to high school. People don't forget shit like that. Yeah, but it's not like you're a real snitch in real life with yeah. with paperwork, but that shit sticks with kids, and then kids get bullied and everything because of that. So I try to make sure she don't got to worry about none of that type, you know? Well, listen, I interviewed Loka D uh, from Chicago. She did 31 years for murder. You know, she was part of this, like, female gang, you know, that was out there putting work. Uh, FBG Butter, his sister K.I., was like allegedly killed like a dozen people in Chicago. So you see girls that are crazier than the guys yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those uh, times you talked about them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, have you had girls grow up around you that were that were active like that? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're all over. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What was the worst thing you've seen a girl do? Not too crazy. I've seen girls like like go one-on-one -on -one with a guy type shit, you feel me, <laughs> and hang with them though, you know? Um, yeah, that's probably the most yeah yeah if your one of your daughters ended up becoming gang related when they reach a certain type of age 15 16 what would you do that, i'm cutting that out that's never gonna happen yeah i'll really press some shit you know what i mean <laughs> whatever whatever people it was influencing that i'm i'm a go uh walk up on them and Whoever I need to get at over there, I'll do that. But yeah, I, everything I'm gonna do everything in my power, not make it happen. But at some point, you have no say. Yeah. Once yeah. they reach a certain age, once they go outside of your house. Yeah, that I guess that's where you gotta really uh, instill it in them before they get to that age, so that way that's not even a thought in their mind, you know. Right. Like, like your own dad didn't want you following yeah. the footsteps and. Here we are. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, like it's harder probably for sons. Like, t sons are more out of control. I mean, I don't have any, but I noticed that, though. You know what I mean? I noticed, uh, like, my sisters were always a lot more easier to, like, you know, uh, they probably listen more, and then me is, like, harder to control me. Yeah. So, uh, what's next for you? Um, uh, just keep dropping videos, album. Vlad TV, that was like my next movie. <laughs> uh, just did the Thizzler Cypher. Um, yeah, just keep going up, keep dropping. Yeah, I don't really got no specific plans. Oh, probably going to do a couple of features, a couple of big features, because I never really been the type to do collabs like that. I always did solo music for the most part. So kind of try to go do that. You know what I mean? Show them something different, but still at the same time, keep my solo stuff going. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, 
Because I feel like Out the Mud is one of those songs. Yeah. But it's at 180,000 views yeah. on Spotify, which is not that big. Okay, I think, yeah, I think on YouTube it's 600,000. Yeah, it's yeah. probably bigger on YouTube. Yeah. But I feel like it should be way bigger. But sometimes, sometimes it's just a random post by somebody or a random TikTok or a random something that suddenly everyone comes in and just suddenly buys in. Yeah, another thing I noticed, it's always the songs I don't think are shit that end up doing the most and the ones I think like, oh, this is the one, it ends up doing the least. It's weird how it works like that. It'd be like that. I mean, it's not up to you. Yeah, it's, it's not. The people. It's up to the people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you don't make hits, the people make the hits. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you make what you make and you put it out there in the world, yeah. but the best art doesn't necessarily get the most recognition because sometimes, I remember Rick Rubin said this, how it's out of your control. Yeah. You know, if you drop on the same day as Taylor Swift, you know, all the attention's on her. Yeah, you know, the timing. You, yeah. yeah, you whoever dropped music during 9-11, no one gave a shit. Yeah. You know, like, like I remember watching this documentary where like the Jackson 5 had a reunion the day before 9-11. Yeah. And it was a huge deal. Nobody gave a shit. Nobody talked about it. Because it was all about 9-11 the next day. No one cared about entertainment or happiness or whatever. Dude, the I, buildings I, are coming yeah, down. I was just talking about that with, with the homies. Uh, we were talking about like going viral and stuff. And like uh, I was telling them, like, a lot of it is just luck. It's those, it's those stars lining up. And you got to get lucky. It has to happen on the right day at the right time. Because... If, like you said, something happens, some tragedy or something, it don't matter who dropped what song on that yeah. day. I mean, it's all about, yeah, for sure. But I will say this, the people that drop the most usually get more lucky. Yep, because they're, they're, uh, they got more chances. Yeah. Every time you drop, it's a chance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was always like with Vlad TV, we launched 16 years ago. And the idea back then was the same as it is today, is drop original content every single day. And today may not be the day that we hit, but tomorrow we have a whole new chance. Yeah. And we drop. Uh, hey, uh, just because you're talking about the Vlad shit, uh, yeah. I want to shout out my little brother, Fury. That's my only, like, brother, like, same parents. Because he's all, he's, he really wanted to be here today because he always watches your shit. But uh, uh, remember how we had the day locked in a few days ago? So yeah. he requested the day off, but then it changed so he wasn't able to come today. Uh, but, yeah, shout out my brother, Fury. Yeah, sorry, he, he's going to be watching. Fury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time. Yeah. Next time. I just had to say his name. Well, Lazy Boy, man, uh, like I'm a fan. Like I said, uh, Thank you. Out the Mud has been on repeat. Yeah. The whole day. That's just dope, literally man. over and over and over yeah, and that, over again. When you told me that before we started the interview, that was dope to hear from you, for sure. Yeah. Well, and it's not always, you know, because for me, it's like, I don't, I'm going to listen to the most popular shit, but I'm yeah. going to like what you're I like. You're going to like what you like. Yeah. You know, and that was the song that I liked the best. And I, and I listened to pretty much the whole catalog. Yeah. And uh, I feel like, you're on the cusp of, of being, you know, bigger than you are right now. You just got to keep putting in that work. Yes, sir. And keep dropping music. Keep doing media. Yeah. Keep doing interviews. Yeah. Do more collabs. Yeah. Because, I mean, ultimately, the collabs are going to introduce you to other people's fan bases. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you some. Uh, yeah. Do you think uh, it's good to do, like, every interview? Or do you think you should kind of choose the ones that you think will actually be good for you? You know, I always wonder that. Well, I feel like, and, and I, I get a lot of interview requests also that I turn down. Ultimately, is it worth your time? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you bigger than the platform? Or is the platform bigger than you? Gotcha. Now, if the platform is bigger than you, then you should absolutely do it. Yeah. If you're bigger than the platform, then you should pick and choose. Yeah, because uh, I got everybody, everyone in Northern California asking for an interview. After I did the No Jumper, I told everybody I'm only doing Vlad next. I'm going to wait for him to hit me. Everybody, All my boys know I said that. I said, I'm not doing none of these. It's Vlad first, and then I'll think about the other ones. Yeah, that's why I was asking. I wasn't yeah. sure if it's something I should do. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, it's it all depends, you know. Yeah. I, I feel like... If it's not a big platform, you should look at it specifically and say, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking with what they're doing here. Because you never know. That small platform might be huge later yeah, on. Like maybe the type of shit they talk about is cool. It's, like some it's, shit it's I ain't talking about. It's dope, it's different. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, if you were to tell me 
20 years ago, the Vlad TV would be bigger than the Source and Double XL. I, I laugh at you. I, that's not possible. They're yeah. going to be here forever. Now, look, Vlad TV is bigger than Source and Double XL. So we, we, we put yeah. in the work. So you never know who that next person is. But, you know, am I going to do an interview on a platform that has a thousand followers? Yeah. No. Because it's not really worth my time yeah. to do it because I know not enough people will watch it for me to spend my time to do it. Yeah. And I'm not just going to charge someone a bunch of money because I know they're not even going to make that back. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's the point? You, I, I remember one time you said, uh, this is one of the reasons that made me say I got to do the black one. You said, yeah, we have guys offer us a bunch of money. Yeah. We turn it down. You were like, you got to earn your spot. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's one yeah. of the reasons I was like, I was like, that's dope. Like, I'm, I'm going to earn, you know what I mean? Yeah. My spot with the... No, it's true. I've turned down $50,000 offers. That's crazy. Yeah. Just because it's like, if you could buy your way onto something, I don't feel it's as valuable. It doesn't make it as special when, when you, you do it. Yeah, you earn, straight you earn up. your way onto it. Yeah. And then once word starts getting around, then it's like, yeah, everyone's just paying for these interviews. Yeah. Then it's like, it doesn't become important for, for sure. people to do those interviews. Yeah. And, you know, it almost like it, when I... Early on in Vlad TV, we did a couple of these paid interviews. And I felt like that shit just killed my spirit. Like, just yeah. doing it. You, you know you got no interest in talking to the you person. You don't want to be there. Yeah. You don't want to be there. The person knows you don't want to be there, so they're feeling some type of way about it. And it's just like, you know, I, I'd rather, you know, just like you can't buy a Jay-Z verse, right? He's going to do it if he wants to do it. Like, Kanye... You can't buy your way into that. You can't get a Drake feature. Yeah. Drake has to want to do it. Mm -hmm. And this is why you've seen him like transform people's careers. Like yeah, Black that's Boy why it's JB. such a big deal when they do when it. When he does it, it's it's a big deal because you know that it's not about the money. Yeah. He's actually really feeling the song. Yeah. And he's doing it for free. Yeah, it's like a real connection. Yeah. yeah. And he feels that this person is like that next that next rapper, that next singer, and he wants to be on that wave mm. when it starts to hit. Yeah. And that and that means a lot. And and for us, that that's kind of has been our thing for a long time. Like, yo, if you get on here, it's because you deserve to be on here. Yeah, that's and, dope. And I fuck you, with that. Yeah. You may not know, like, you know, you know, some of my viewers may not know who Lazy Boy is. But after Definitely. they watch the interview, they'll realize why you're here. You see what I'm saying? That's dope, yeah. They're not just going to watch and, and go like, well, okay, this person obviously paid to get on. Now, yeah, like, yeah. this person has a has a... A catalog, they have yeah. a story, you know what I'm saying? They have something to say that, you know, I feel that this is someone who's going to be important in the future. Yeah, appreciate and, that. Uh, yeah. yeah, man, that's why I brought you on. And like I said, I a lot of times, man, it's just one song away. It's that one song that you haven't dropped yet. Yep. That you may not even think that's the song. Yeah. This may just be a throwaway. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, be like that, yeah. And, and that's the song that... That's the Some one. random TikToker suddenly does a dance to, yo, and then, yo. you know, and, and, and the music industry these days, you have like songs like Million Dollar Baby that like from artists that you haven't heard of that suddenly go to number one. Yeah. Just because, yo, the people fuck with it, man. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I feel like you have the talent, you know, like when Thank I went you. through the catalog, I'm like, nah, the, the, this dude, I mean, yeah, there, there's the, the, the drama aspect of his career, yeah. and, you know, yeah. I, I, I respect that, but. I feel like you have the talent and the music to back it up. Yeah. And the views haven't caught up to the talent yet. Mm. But that's okay. It takes a while. Mm. Five years, 10 years sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. You see people like 2 chains that don't get into their stride until their late 30s and mm. stuff like that. They sometimes reinvent themselves, change their names, change yeah. their style, change their production, whatever else. But if they stick with it and they really have something like that spark, yeah. eventually... Everyone will catch on. Yeah. And I feel with you, that's what I'm seeing happening right now in somewhat of the early stages. But fast forward a couple of years, man, you stick to it. You really focus on the music. Try to, you know, keep the bullshit yeah. out of your life as much as possible. Sometimes it's unavoidable. To a minimum. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But to the point where you could keep your focus, to keep producing, keep doing shows, keep traveling, meeting new people, networking. You know, I think you're going to be one of the dudes that everyone knows pretty soon. Yeah, appreciate that. That's what it is, man. Until next time. Mm -hmm. Peace. Thank you, Vlad. Appreciate you.